Hello and welcome back to another video from Provail Tech. Today we're going to be hopping into Datto RMM and talking about best practices for user offboarding. So this topic will discuss kind of the best practices when deactivating a user's Datto RMM account or deleting a user within Datto RMM. So the first thing you want to go ahead and do is hop into settings. Uh, under setup, you will see users there. And then underneath the users, we'll list all of the users. So we've got mine filtered here down to my account within Data RMM. A couple of things you'll immediately see is that uh, you'll see the status here along with the deactivation. So if we go ahead and click on the user itself, uh, regarding deactivating their account for offboarding, you kind of have two different options depending on what you're going to be using for this user access. So with that, you'll have deactivating a user. So you'll use this option. Um, if you're going to be having kind of, you know, the person not going to be needing access to that OARM for an extended period of time. So for instance, uh, this will be under the deactivation tab here. You'll see that when we go to create the user, this will give us the deactivation field here and we can schedule this out for the future so if we know that this is going to be a contractor for instance for a three month period of time we can go ahead and set that deactivation date in the future to automatically deactivate this account now this can also be done ad hoc or as kind of you know on an as an ad needed basis for those accounts that don't need to have permanent access and then you can just go ahead and click the inactive field there and then this account will be uh, deactivated for the time being if you do, uh, you know, decide to go further than that and do need to delete the user within Data RMM, there are a couple additional considerations to go over, and that's what we'll be covering here today as well. So before deleting a user in Data RMM, a couple of things you need to know is that all of the associated data from that user must either be deleted or assigned to another user. So let's go ahead and pull this up here for you. So if we go ahead and click on a user here, for instance, and we see this delete tab, uh, we go ahead and click on uh, delete on there. What you'll go ahead and notice is that if the user has no uh, content or anything tied to them, you'll just go ahead and get a simple uh, checkbox here. You'll go ahead and click this, I understand, and then you'll go ahead and click delete. Where this comes into play, however, is that if the user has any sort of uh, data assigned to their account, what you'll go ahead and need to do is either delete this data or you will go ahead and assign the data to another user within there. So we're going to show you the process that for here for both, but you can see that on the very top there. When you go ahead and do this, what you'll go ahead and see is that if you have the user associated data um, that you're trying to delete, it'll go ahead and pop up here and let you know what's popped up. So you can see here there are two jobs and six filters, and we can go ahead and show you there in a second uh, where you can view that information at, but that's just going to be one of the options there. However, uh, typically if you're going to, go to, going to be assigning this over to another user, you'll go ahead and just put that user in the field there, and then uh, you know, go ahead and delete the user there. So if we hop back into the users, for instance, here, and we hop into, let's say, my account, uh, for the associated data, where that's pulling that from is down from here. So you will see if the user were to have uh, created the account, uh, you know, jobs, filters, reports, or dashboards, that'll go ahead and pop up here. Those are the data information that's going to be tied to another user. A couple other things that you'll want to take a look at when deleting a user as these things are uh, you know additional privileged information access so take a look at things such as here with this api if this api key were to have been generated for this user for instance uh, any api keys attached to an inactive or deleted account um, will no longer function uh, as expected for security reasons so if you have any sort of integrations that you've set up for that user to use the api key um, new keys will need to be generated for those but a couple other things to take a look at when deleting a user uh, will be underneath the settings, uh, setup and global settings. This will be email recipients. So this will be any uh, you know account that you've manually entered in here. Um, this email field. So for instance, this email field that is not uh, deleted by uh, automatically when you delete the user in Data RMM. So you will need to manually delete uh, any sort of email recipient status. So that'll pop up underneath the setup global settings here for email recipients. You may also see this uh, under options for sites, for instance, if they were to have a site um, and that site were to have an email recipient, same thing there. That does not get removed uh, automatically during the, uh, the period when you delete the user. 
And then finally, the last place you'd want to check that would just be monitoring and policies would be uh, if there was any manual email entry done for that user into there, that would need to be deleted as well. But other than that, uh, most of the other accesses and areas are taken care of for you. So any of those manual things, just make sure to do a little bit of cleanup if those are in there. But other than that, thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any other tips, questions, or feedback, feel free to leave a comment or suggestion on this video. Thanks for watching again. I'll catch you next time. Thank you.